get all our stuff to come and build this fence. A few other things we got that blue staked. So this is the walk along the property on here. Marks on the ground for the power. Doesn't look like they've marked water yet because there's the water and no marks. Marked out the phone. I'm pretty sure it's right there, but you never know what angle it goes on. So I'll have to give them a day or so. So we gotta pull this door off in the end of here and put a garage door on the end of this shed so we can fit this boat in there. We got some 2x12s inside, 2x4s and stuff to frame it. Some new siding for that transition trim right there. For the joint, you can see that there's no transition trim on this existing stuff. And that's why it bulges right there. You can see it bulging out. It's because they didn't put that little piece of Z trim on there. This is what it looks like. And it just has, it just lets the water shed around the, the edge of the wood so no water sits in the joint. A couple other little things we gotta do here too. We got these stairs. We're gonna cut it down to size. We got another rock to do the same thing that we did on this front porch. We did this in a different video. We're gonna do this same situation on this side right here. Here's the old set of stairs getting kind of rickety. The snow comes off the roof and lands on them, beats them up. We do that set of stairs and right here on this corner we're gonna build a column and do some of that same stone. So on this corner, on this corner, and in that corner right there. We'll make it look a little nicer. Another thing we gotta do is underneath this deck here the rodents keep digging underneath that we're gonna pull that stuff off pour a footing right there and then resheet it build an access door in it on this fence here use these existing rails so it looks like this over here so this is the idea here get it to look like this we're gonna come and sturdy some of these up make it a little tougher give you an example of the difference between cedar and pine on a fence you grab this post and shake it and it's pretty solid and that's a cedar post been there for probably 10 years still pretty solid in the ground and it's only about six inches in diameter and come over to this just a pine post it's about 10 inches in diameter and it's literally about to fall apart it's twice as big and the cedar post is holding better than the pine post this is what the pine posts did when they rotted away basically these eight eight years ten years max those things are done we're gonna come back and kind of fix a few things that rail fell off screw it back on we got to do repairs on all of this and then all the way down this side of the property along the road we're back down to his main gate they dug the power line in right here power and water they dug up a whole bunch of just ugly yellow rocks. They want us to uh, get rid of all these things. So we'll probably put a whole bunch of that. Yeah, clean up. Kind of makes the forest have a little bit of a eyesore with all that yellow in there. Everywhere else has bark and tree leaves all over it. So with these columns then this existing block that's on here it's only like a, about a finger width back we're gonna have to make it back further i don't want moisture coming down here and getting behind my stone so we're gonna cut this out a little bit so the stone will be recessed because i don't want it sticking out further this side is the same way it's a little better but it's not quite far enough so we'll just cut it off and then we're going to make it squared up so we'll add another block to this side of it and make the column 16 inches square.
We got the opening cut. We're ready to put this board up there. Got the angle cut. It's a 45 degree angle because it's a 12-12 pitch. Ended up cutting off the rake wall just a little bit right there and we put that kicker in right there to hold the weight up for the ridge beam. We're going to put the 2x12s up in there. The first one's going to have to go against the truss board. So we'll go right underneath it and then the others will go over the top of it. I'm going to do three of them. Two of them will sit on the wall, the other one will be backing. Broke the sawzall blade so we took this little saw here, the carver in and blade, and put it on there and just cut all the nails off and it's about 10 times faster than a sawzall. This one is going to sit on top of the wall right there. So that one sits back underneath the truss. It's the weight sitting on the edge of the wall there. Got our posts ready to spread them out. We got holes drilled. Still got to tune them up slightly, so I'm a little bit of an angle. So what I did here is put some two by sixes around the perimeter, except on the top, in the middle, and the bottom. 
just a two by four. But right here I did a two by six and a two by four so that the hinge can go across it and it'll be able to bolt onto it all the way through both of those. Helps hold it a little more secure. So we're gonna mount that hinge on there, right there. So we're gonna put four hinges on this door because it's a four foot wide, fairly heavy. We sheeted one side of it already. The inside is sheeted with three quarter inch plywood. Give it some extra beef. And then the other side's just this T111. With this hinge, I had to drill the hole just a little bit bigger because I'm using a carriage bolt that has the square knuckle on the end of it so so that it would fit down flush so that's just security from the outside it's just round so i'm using uh these 5 16 three inch bolts to go through the door three inch long bolts and then these five inch by 5 16 bolts are going to go through the two before like right here they'll go clear through the whole thing that way it gives it some more security. So what I did is put some quarter inch shims underneath the door right there and then I put another one underneath right here to hold the door exactly where I wanted it to be so that when I screw these hinges on everything lines up so these joints all line up perfectly and then the hinge gets mounted on while the door is just sitting in place. I didn't cut this all the way through. I just cut it where the hinge was going to be. Like right there it's cut. Right in here it's cut all the way through there. So that, the, so that I could put the hinge on and then finish cutting the door out so the door would stay in place. So I stapled the, the T111 to the door while it was shimmed in place and then I'll put the hinges on and then everything should line up perfectly. So right here you can see the shims holding it out the distance I want it away from the, the two by fours and then off the floor. It's about a quarter of an inch. So there's the holes that we will clear through everything. So that's what's gonna hold the hinge. The, the carriage bolts will just come through there and we'll put a nut on them. The washer and a nut. You got the gaps there all the way across the top so the door will swing freely. section down here
got the mulch all spread out in this area. It's turning out pretty nice looking. Got rid of all those rocks. Made a big difference to it. Got these footings under here poured. Got our boards wet set with the screws in them. This is sticking out because right up here it's actually level from that board down to there. It's all poured clear across there. Still got to wet set that one. And we'll put the, we got to do some wire mesh on the bodom of this insulation here. The rodents keep getting under there and build nests on top of it and then it all falls down. So, you know, put some hardware cloth or something on that to keep it from falling out. And then we'll put these pieces of skirting back on and build an access door. Got the door all installed. All the hinges are bolted on with the carriage bolts. Got the latch hooked up. This is the old latch off the old gate door, whatever. So we, when we put the door on, we just shimmed it up. So that it was the quarter inch all the way around and then just cut the plywood just a blade width so that you can't tell very good where the where it's, the door starts and stops other than the hinges okay we put this piece of transition metal z trim in there to keep the water from running down here and into the other piece of plywood so that kind of sheds it out. And then at the door joint, just cut it flat and then just stick it out straight so that the door doesn't grab a hold of it when it closes. Big old hornet's nest right here. It's a good thing it's vacant. You gotta put a piece of plywood right there. You got these columns all stoned up. Got the stairs installed. The rock at the bottom. Just good old rustic used stairs. But it fits the cabin real nice. We're gonna build a ramp coming out of this garage here. It's gonna be concrete, so we're gonna just go the full width of the door. It's eight feet wide about 16 to 18 inches off the dirt so we're going to take this piece of flashing up here and put it right over this corner like that so that it'll keep any water running down the front of the door so it'll run out of the shed instead of being put run out and down the ramp and we'll cover that with a piece of tar paper or something so that it doesn't doesn't uh, deteriorate that wood away from the concrete sweating against it. We throw these forms out. We got some plywood cut. We throw it right there. Another one on this side, and then we'll probably mound some dirt up in the middle. It doesn't need to be that thick of concrete, so we'll probably mound some dirt up there and pack it and pour it. Put some uh, put the flashing on there and get them good screws about four inches apart. We use some quad all season formula under the edges of it. So we put some here on this side. Concrete will push up against the other one. 
Got it all formed up. Got the braces there. Use some block to fill the gap under the deck. And then we got the tar paper. We'll keep kick up against there to keep the wood from rotting away. We're gonna strip these forms off of here and finish the sides because it's kind of a little bit honeycomb that's so hard I don't know if I'll get a good finish on it with just using what it is it just kicks so fast so we're gonna do mortar and some concrete bonder and I wouldn't typically recommend just mortar all by itself but with this bonder it'll hold on to there real good plus it's quite green so it'll be fine it'll actually stick really good with it being green like this so it didn't honeycomb too bad so we'll just kind of float that off and if we need a little bit we'll put it to it and fill in the gaps and finish it up nice You might wonder if the mortar will discolor it a little bit, but it's not. Not if it floats in with the rest of it. The colors will blend just fine. If you're worried about it, just put a little more cement powder in it. Some Portland cement powder to your mortar. Or you can just use Portland cement powder if you want to. It just has to be blended with some aggregate or else that cement won't, it won't look right. And it'll probably pop off if it doesn't get some sand mixed with it. Color is quite consistent across. So, okay, we got one more board to pull off, but I wanted to show you something when you're pulling a board off like this. If you just grab it and lift it straight up, a lot of times it'll just break this edge right here. If you lift the board straight up, it'll just pop that edge off. So what you do to get it to break is you break the connection by thumping down on it right here at this hammer. You just thump up. Try not to hit the edge of the slab. And then it breaks the connection from the concrete. And then you pull it straight out, like straight out like this. Don't lift straight up. And then you take it away from the slab. So now we can work that edge a little bit better. It's got a little bit of honeycomb in it. So this corner is broken a little bit. So we can square up the corner, make it look nice and pretty. Okay, it's all finished up. Got the edges all nice and floated. It's real purdy. We gotta get some uh, curing compound or something on there. Help slow the thing down, it's hot.
got the mulch all spread out, covered up all the rocks. The stoop is all finished, all dried, stripped. We finished the edges and they turned out pretty good. No honeycomb. Turned out pretty nice. Got the siding done, got the door done. Got the columns done. Got a set of stairs done. Got that footing all poured. The skirting's mostly on. I just gotta finish this door and put the hardware cloth on the subfloor. And then we are done.